thank you for the invitation to come here today and good afternoon everybody. Um, my name is Ellen Nygren and I work for the Swedish Trade Union Confederation LO, uh, but I have been seconded to the European Trade Union Confederation for the last two years where I have been working as an advisor on social protection issues including occupational pensions. So that's why I am here today uh, with a bit of a European perspective. Uh, I have coordinated the ETUC task force on the IORP2 proposal. And I am currently a member of the Occupational Pension Stakeholder Group of IOPA and also the Commission's Pensions Forum. Trade unions uh, represent workers in relation to their employers and in society, in society in general, including matters on legislation. The ETUC, the European Trade Union Confederation, has 90 national uh, affiliated member organizations, um, both in private and public sectors and representing very different contexts regarding pensions. But still, the ETUC speaks with one voice of the European workers. And that is in social dialogue with the employers and uh, in relation to the European institutions. Just a short uh, explanation about the ETUC involvement in pensions, especially occupational pensions. Uh, as I mentioned and other people have mentioned already today, there is a huge diversity among member states and uh, among national systems when it comes to, to pensions. But uh, uh, something they have in common is that pension entitlements are earned throughout the working lives. And uh, no matter whether it is the first pillar pensions or the second pillar pensions, whether it's about defined benefit or defined contribution, pay-as-you-go or fully funded schemes. Uh, workers set aside a proportion of their earnings for future consumption. You can say pensions are deferred pay. The legal framework for how to secure these future um, incomes is crucial for workers and their representatives in trade unions. In Sweden, when we talk about pensions, we normally describe pensions as a pyramid, where the basis is the first pillar, the state pension, which covers all and gives the largest amount of money uh, when you come to withdrawing your pension. And then the second pillar is added as the second layer, the smaller proportion when it comes to width, because not everybody is covered, although in Sweden about 90% of workers are covered by an occupational pension. And then on top is the third pillar, the private savings. And from a trade union perspective, I must stress uh, that the first pillar uh, and the pension reforms concerning the first pillar are very important since they are financed uh, through contributions related to work life, as I mentioned, and also trade unions are often consulted in those reforms. Regarding second pillar pensions, occupational pensions, uh, they are directly linked to an employment contract and they are part of the pay workers get for their work. But there are differences between groups of workers and across the member states of the EU, um, and they get wider, I would dare to say. Only about half of the European workers are covered by an occupational pension scheme in some sense, and the ETUC affiliates are often parties to collective agreements on occupational pensions. Trade unions thus have a say regarding the design of pension plans and therefore also about how these plans are managed. Sometimes trade unions and representatives of trade unions are actively involved in the management of pension assets. And this can be through IORPs, but also through other means like, for instance, insurance companies. 
And we must not forget this when we discuss the IORP 2 proposal. Uh, that um, the, the directive, the proposed directive and the current IORP 1 directive is about the IORPs, the institutions. Uh, but we should remember the difference between the pension schemes and the providers, which can be an IORP. So I, I say IORPs uh, is not the same thing as the pension scheme. As an example, I mentioned Sweden, where 90% of the workforce are covered by an occupational pension scheme. The majority have a DC defined contribution scheme with an individual choice of providers but the most of the providers are insurance companies, mutual or private. Uh, we have very small and very few IORPs, but still occupational pensions are important. And I would just like to remind all stakeholders in the debate about this situation. IORPs are not the same thing as pension schemes. So, the ETUC task force on the IORP 2 directive uh, was set up last spring, the spring 2014, just when the first uh, proposal was uh, published by the Commission. And uh, we have asked our members, our affiliated national organizations, to contribute with volunteers who wanted to, to give their expertise to a common position. So um, we came to a conclusion. And the the ETC uh, took from the beginning a positive approach to, to, towards a revision of the IORP directive. The goals to improve better governance and safer pensions are, of course, positive for us as trade unions and representatives of workers. And trade unions and workers are generally in favor of a regulatory framework which can safeguard future pension promises. Again, this is valid for DB, DC, multi or one employer schemes, IORPs or other forms of management. The main message from the ETC is that all pension reforms should aim at improving people's situation. So regarding the IORP proposal, trade unions have been a bit concerned about the focus uh, from the institutions on creating an internal market for IORPs and their services. We are not against cross-border activity, but it's, it's presented like a goal in itself and we question this goal. IORPs should uh, act on guidance from the contracting parties to the pension schemes that they manage. The majority of employers are rather small and do not operate across borders, or they have posted workers from one country to another for short-term short contracts, and short-term contracts are for up to two years of time. And during a period when you're posted from one country to another, you belong to the pension system, the pension system of your home country, thus no need for a extra cross-border regime. Um, employment contracts, as we all know, they exist in a national context. Labor law, social security, taxation legislation, and national collective agreements. So therefore, although we are not against cross-border activity, we question the large focus on this in the IORP directive. We also say that uh, there is need for caution in allowing IORPs to invest in assets which are not traded on regulated markets, especially in small funds. These can be large risks. Regarding information to scheme members and beneficiaries, the pension benefit statement, well, we are perhaps more positive than other stakeholders. We say information to scheme members and beneficiaries are very important things. That is uh, a basis for making informed choices about consumption, about investment, about choices regarding your pension. 
So standardization can be positive and contribute to comparability. Um, but I have listed three words that are important. We say that uh, pension reforms should improve people's situation and they should improve the incomes of workers in retirement. And for that, the regulatory framework needs to promote adequacy of pensions, security in investing the assets, and information to scheme members. Thank you.